Welcome back. I am so excited for this section because we're finally combining everything we know into one place. By the end of this, we have a unified understanding of how everything works in the world of web development. We have our front end, smart brain here with the sign in page. And we have our app built in React. We also have our server running on port 3000, listening to requests, but now we don't need this database anymore. We can create our own Postgres database now and have the server interacting with it through SQL, updating everything, and then responding through Express back to the front end. It's gonna be so much fun, I'm so excited. But before we actually start to code anything, we have to design our database. Let's create a database and we'll call it SmartBrain. All right, perfect. Now that we have our database created, I want you to think of these three separate things as their own individual computers that when we deploy is going to be different parts. We have our server living on a computer. We have our database leaving on a computer and we can actually connect here to it. And we also have our app in a separate computer as well. So let's close this quickly and connect to our database, to our local host, and we called it SmartBrain. Click connect, and there you go. But no tables yet. To get started, as we did when we created our API design for our server, we really wanna think about how our database would look. And we're using relational database here because in my opinion, and in moving forward, Relational databases are really, really good. Although databases like MongoDB are really easy to get started with and they're dynamic, you don't have to think too much about when you're starting off. I think relational databases offer a really strong way to think about how your app should be structured and how everything and all the pieces come together. It's a really, really powerful tool that I see the industry shifting back to more and more. Whether you use Postgres or MySQL or SQLite, all these databases are pretty much the same. They're super powerful. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our app because we're not necessarily storing information like LinkedIn or Facebook where everything is a document model. We have users that are interacting with each other, but within our app, we can have different things. We can have login information. If we expand our app, we can have maybe information about the type of images that they've submitted. Now, looking at what we've built, there's definitely a few things that we wanna create. If we go back to our database example here, we have our users table, which we're gonna have to create. But remember what I said about passwords and the way we store passwords. We don't necessarily wanna create a user object or a user table with all these columns. We wanna separate things out and connect them through foreign keys. So we're gonna create a users table and then a login table and have those tables connected through perhaps the email field. Let's go back to our GUI and create these tables now. I'm gonna open up the query. Let's remove this from now, our old query. And let's create our users table. As you remember, it's create table users. I have brackets around here just so it's clean. And within here, I'll say ID is gonna be serial, and this will be our primary key. We will also have name, and the name will give it a variable character of 100. We'll just assume that nobody's name is gonna be more than 100 characters, which again, 
I don't think we will. Otherwise, our database will give us an error. We can also create a email field, and this will be a text. We also want to make sure that this is a unique email. Otherwise, we don't want to register the same user over and over. And it cannot be null. It must always be there because this is where we're going to use in our login table. We also know that we want entries. And the entries can really be a quite a big number. If we have a really dedicated user, well, then that person can keep submitting those photos. So let's just do a large int here. Oops, and instead of large, it's big int. There you go. With big int, we will also say that we want the default, and this might be new for us, but default value should be zero. Unless we somehow insert with entries and a number, if we don't specify what we're inserting the number with, it should be default to zero. Finally, we also want to get the time that they joined our app, and we can use a timestamp data type for that. And again, we want to make sure that this is not null either. All right, let's run this and see if it works. And I get an error at or near, and that's because I added a comma at the end here. Let's try that again. There you go. If I refresh, we have our users table. Amazing. So we have the users table, which we're going to store all this information. And we also want to make sure that we store our login information, the email and the hashes. Because remember, we're never storing plain text passwords. Let's create that. I'm going to go back to the query, remove this, and change it to login. And this login will now have an ID, once again, of serial. And the serial data type will just increment. It'll be a primary key. And we'll have a column hash that has a variable character of 100 once again, because we know that bcrypt always gives us a certain length hash, and it'll never be over 100 characters. Not null. We absolutely need this information. And then finally, email which will be the same as the users table. And this email will be a text. It must be unique and definitely not null. Let's run the query and refresh. All right, we got ourselves our tables design. So now that we have these tables, we understand what our data is going to look like. This is going to be a database that will persist no matter if the server goes down. It's going to make sure that this data stays put. Now that we have these three pieces running, we can start to work with the server, remove the database variable, and actually connect to our database. I'm excited to show you how we're going to do that in the next video.